Max Arthur Mantle is an author, photographer, and filmmaker who directed Visible, a documentary highlighting the intersections of Caribbean and LGBT identities, as well as homophobia and transphobia. The film features Dominique Jackson, Karamo, and Stacey Ann Chin, and numerous other individuals who grew up in the Caribbean and moved elsewhere to live authentic lives. I had the pleasure of chatting with Max in Los Angeles. So what inspired you to create Visible? Well, Visible is uh, spawned from uh, my book tour. I wrote a novel, so I'm going to plug it. It's called Batsy Boy. It's coming of age about being queer in Jamaica, struggling with your identity and coming to America as an immigrant and living in the space that as a black queer immigrant, the trials and triumphs that you experience. So during my book tour, I traveled to all these spaces that have had Caribbean population that resonated with uh, the book. And they, I found a uh, commonality where their stories were similar to mine, even though they were not only from Jamaica, they were from all over the Caribbean. So I was like, my background is uh, as a fashion photographer and every photographer, once you've Found your, your accomplished your career path, it's still, I think the next step is moving images. So I wanted to do something that's going to be within my strength. So that's what inspired me. I revisited these spaces. Every city that I went to Toronto, Boston, New York, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, and LA, I found a local crew and I did my research to get the participants that kind of reflect the city and were of Caribbean uh, descent. So that was my inspiration. Okay, I love that. So while you were on your book tour, you were figuring out who you would interview for? No, I was not. I was just like excited about my book tour. Okay. Then when I went back to Miami, there was a writer called Tim Paget. He wrote, uh, article in the Thai magazine, David Jamaica, the most homophobic place on earth. And he interviewed me because the title of my book, Matty Boy, which is like a hateful slur, okay. which I reappropriated. And he was like, what has happened since? And he kind of, kind of instilled me an idea of to tell what's going on now, okay. especially in, uh, the diaspora. At first, I wanted to go to the Caribbean to talk about it, but at the time, the opportunity wasn't there, and then the, the participants were not as open to express themselves as the ones that are in the diaspora, where they're in a more liberal space. Okay. So that was uh, what prompted me. Okay. So this is your first documentary? Yes, so it is. what are some technical things that you wish you would have known prior to filming the documentary? Well, shooting on location, the sound, <laughs> just elements, just being aware of your uh, space, the car sounds, the horns, they're louder than I yet to imagine when, when you're looking at posts. And just the, the technical visuals that you want to tell the story, the murals, what you want to capture. It, I had done my, I was excited to tell the story. And I was excited to get the participants. But if I had put more into the pre-production in terms of getting them in their homes or stuff like that. But I was like, well, why would I want that? Because I want to have the, if I'm in Toronto, it should look like Toronto. But Toronto has a noise and all this stuff, just like New York, when you see the documentary, it, it captures the city mm -hmm. from the uh, Caribbean, participants lens so that's what I learned okay. that I'll put into my future efforts okay so you said future efforts are there any new film projects that you're working on that you can absolutely talk about? I'm excited I mean it's, during the pandemic I wrote a feature my first feature also inspired by my novel it's about a similar thing which but it's specific to Jamaica I did my documentary with all the Caribbean, but this is specifically Jamaica. And it's inspired by my novel in the 
first part where it's all contained with the uh, Jamaican experience. But it's it's not necessarily an adaptation, it's it's racial. So it's trickled in with uh, other people's experiences uh, that I have found interested and I've written the characters that are based on real people. So it's in development, it has progressed. Okay. We're looking at that it's I've attached a couple actors identifiable already and my producer and I were excited about the possibilities of having to go into production in the fall 2024, going to Jamaica, which is going to be a big effort for me because I haven't been back since I left 30 years ago. So I'm in no rush right now, but I want to prepare where every base is covered and I can have this realized. Okay. Yeah. So as a director, how has your directorial style change from visible to this new project? Like what are some things that are like different for you? Well, with the doc, I kind of sit back and let the participants tell their story. It wasn't much of my uh, input in terms of how, because they're telling their lives and that's not my life. So I kind of create give them the platform. But with this feature, I have curated these characters, like crafted the location, the set design, the, 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 the style, everything is curated, an art house approach, and I have totally evolved. It's my, it's like my, my, I have three children. One, the documentary I felt was like my stepchild for a little bit, but this is like my main excitement that I totally immersed in. So it's a direct hands-on, not micromanage, but just a direct hands-on approach in all the areas as opposed to doing a documentary where you just, I would just sit back and let the participants tell their story. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything about yourself during the filmmaking process for Visible? Well, I come from a fashion <laughs> photography background where it's, especially in Miami Beach, where it's very superficial. It's, I want to do this, I want to just like very meticulous and Fashion, style, looks, everything is vanity and it's, it revolves around it. That's the industry. But what I've learned is like to go beyond that to get the human value of these uh, subjects. I still have an eye for beauty, <laughs> but I have to realize that it's not always about beauty. It's about the innate human qualities of a person, which doesn't really necessarily have beauty attached to it. It could be very ugly, but it's very uh, interesting, very deep, and it connects with someone. And it's a beautiful story in, in, in a general sense. For any young filmmakers out there, what are five tips for them to become better filmmakers? Well, I think uh, my approach to filmmaking, I didn't go to film school. And I felt like my journey was a culmination of everything that I've done in my past. As a writer, a fashion photographer, a club kid in the 90s, everything that's eclectic to me has been created this journey to make me realize that this is what I want to do. This is my next step. This is my next uh, part of my evolution. So there's always the drive to go to film school, but many people didn't go to film school. I went to Howard University, I studied journalism. I have no interest in journalism, but I like what it taught me, how to craft a story, how to do the basics. So it's good to have the formal education, not even university level, but just like a mentor or a workshop, a course, a community college, something like that, it, within the field that you can have a knowledge of it. And what I have done is, I love to teach myself. Like Google, I Google everything. I mean, when I was writing, I mean, just the whole process, it, 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 it leads you into all these areas that you learn, you teach yourself. And if you have a drive and zeal and excitement to learn these things, you will, you will find the spaces. And 
not necessarily to compare yourself to who is doing it and who is rocking it and who's getting all the attention right now. I don't feel that should be of your focus. It should be a distraction. But if you could have, have admiration for them, but we're all on a different uh, path. And just stay true to your journey. After the film festival, where else can people watch the film? Well, I want to do the festival circuit for uh, what's the next spring. I want to take it to Europe. I'm interested in BFI. There's interest in a bookstore in uh, Amsterdam to I'm kind of partnering with my, I kind of want to marry my book with the, the documentary. So if I have a screening, I have a book signing, it, it just works out. So I want to travel to London, uh, Berlin, uh, Amsterdam, spaces that are, have interest in that. And have to see what the audience, bring it to a new audience. And then I'm very much interested in getting into universities, libraries, because this is a, part of the, it could be a part of the curriculum yeah. in terms of educating uh, people about other spaces that are not as liberal and who have experienced homophobia, transphobia, all those hate. And we experience that here in America, but it's on another level in the Caribbean, honey. So that's educational. So getting into libraries and uh, universities also my interests and then at the end of the day you will find this home and on my website probably pay for view or something but it's going to be available on my website okay that's the, the last journey okay and what does it mean for you to be selected for the black alphabet film festival i am so honored because i am very familiar with that uh festival uh the ones who have shown there, they have a library of the, 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 the like a plethora of black queer films that has all gone through that festival. And it's like Chicago and the whole the space is just like I'm very honored to be a part of it. Okay. Is there anything else that you would want to share with our audience about the film or yourself? Well, I have made LA my new uh, home. It's totally different from Miami. I go back to Miami frequently because there's something about Miami that you, you, you can't uh, get anywhere else. But part of my journey here is to build my audience. You can find me on Instagram, Max Arthur Or my new project is called The Other Boys, The Other Boy Film. And that's also attached to my. Instagram, so just supported, uh, reaching out, offering your uh, two cents. I might take it, I might not, but <laughs> it's nice to have a conversation. Okay, thanks for chatting with us at Black Alphabet Film Festival, and we really love your documentary, Visible. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me.